Writer Ministries, a ministry of helps, healing, evangelism, love, prayer, salvation. Writer Ministries is an international ministry bringing healing, evangelism, and salvation to the nations of the world. Come be a part of this growing outreach where you too can learn to preach, teach, and heal in Jesus' name. Writer Ministries is a ministry that declares the kingdom of God is the power of God getting results. Now, here's Pastor Miriam. Good morning. Welcome to Writer Ministry. Um, uh, right before we give the word of the, uh, that the Lord has for you today, let's open up with prayer. Father God, I bless you today, Lord God, for this word. I thank you, Lord God, for revealing to us, Lord, the that, um, message that you would have for us, Lord God, to encourage us, to lift us up, Lord God, to show us the, the right way to go and how much you love us, Lord God. Your word is love. You are love. And we bless you, Father God. And we do not take this lightly, Lord God, but we know the, the awesomeness, Lord God, of you and your presence, Lord, here with us today. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, they all said, yes and amen. And so today's sermon is called, Sound the Trumpet of Salvation. And it was going to be the remission of your sins, but it sounded so stern. <laughs> I said, Holy Spirit, there's got to be a better, <laughs> better way. And so he said, sound the trumpet of salvation. When everybody comes to know the Lord, all heaven breaks out in rejoicing. That it's not just a, okay, good, yeah, okay, nice, yeah, glad, glad to hear it. No, no, they, they, the trumpets are sounding. There's a big fanfare. All the heaven is rejoicing when someone comes to, to the Lord. It's not just a tinkle on the bell of the tree like it, it's a wonderful life. <laughs> Angel got its wings, remember. <laughs> no, it's a big celebration because someone has departed darkness and come into his marvelous light. Someone has loosed from the grips of the devil and come into the goodness of God. Amen. And so there is a great celebration. There is a great celebration. And so in John uh, chapter 20, and this is um, after the resurrection, and Jesus is alive, right? But the guys don't know it yet. The guys don't know it. They're up in the, hiding in the upper room. I don't know. We just saw this movie, you know. And, um, the tribute was not there. <laughs> but not, not the Bible says. But Jesus comes in. He comes into the scene. And let's look at verse 19. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. I'm, I'm sure they were just kind of like awestruck and their mouth hung open. But, and when he had said so, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then Jesus said unto them, Peace be unto you, as my Father hath sent me even so you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. This was the first salvation, the born again experience. Because in the previous uh, chapters in John 16, Jesus is praying to God that they be made one, even as God and Jesus, the Holy Ghost, were one that they would have God dwell in them the same. And there it is. He breathed on them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Now, this is not being um, baptized in the Holy Ghost with speaking in tongues. This is the born-again experience. Amen. Everyone that is born again receives the Holy Spirit as that inward witness that says, Jesus is alive that says, I am a child of God. God loves me. I receive Jesus in my heart. And some people, they'll cry. I've had people cry, you know, when they, when they realize that the Holy Ghost just came in them and that now they're alive unto God. 
And this is that born again experience. Amen. I'll turn it on. <laughs> All the coats are coming out. <laughs> yeah, it does in here. But, and so in, the, in verse 23, Jesus says, Whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. And I thought, you think, Lord, that seems like an odd place to have that verse. And to receive the Holy Ghost and then remit sins or retain sins. And the Lord said, that, no, that's binding and loosing. That's binding and loosing. See, when we remit somebody's sins and we um, declare that they are forgiven in the name of Jesus. Now, do you have to remit the sins of people who are born again? The answer is no, of course. No, because they're holy. Their sins are already paid for. But the sins of a person who is not born again, those need to be remitted. Like when Jesus was on the cross, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Right? And when they were stoning Stephen, he says, Lord, count this not against them. Right? They're not born again. They need to have their sins remitted. And in, in James, it talks about, and who's ever, you know, laying hands on the sick and anointing them. And he says, uh, whoever has committed sins, they, it, the sins will be forgiven. This is for a people who are not born again. Your sins are all forgiven once and for all. And people who are not born again, they need to have those sins forgiven to receive the healing of God. And that's why God says that if you pray for them, I'll forgive them and they will be healed. Lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So that you don't have to be born again to receive the healing power of God. Amen? But anybody who does and realizes what happened, they received God's love and his power. Said, yeah, I want you to be my Lord and Savior. You healed me. You healed me. You love me. And so that, that softens their heart and they realize that they're in the presence of God. You know, and the Holy Spirit has done his job, convicted the world of, yeah, I'm a sinner, and I need what Jesus did for me. I need that. And so that's, of course, that's the unforgivable sin. I'll just throw that out there because Jill hasn't heard me preach that yet. But I was all puzzled and everything. He says, well, what is the unforgivable sin? John, John said, or I think it was John, said, you know, I don't say that you should pray for a person for that. And the Lord told me in such a simple way, you know, because he talks to me like this because it's the way I think. You know, he says, well, of course you can't remit somebody's sin for not asking Jesus into their heart. That's the only unforgivable sin because they must have asked Jesus into their heart to be born again. I can't say, Father, they don't know what they're doing. Forgive them for not asking you into their heart. No, they're still responsible for asking Jesus into their heart. That's the only sin that you cannot remit. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right? No big mystery. There's no hidden, uh, the, the unforgivable sin is not divorce, <laughs> right? I, the, I was raised in the Baptist church and I'm telling you, the unforgivable sin was divorce, <laughs> right? They would almost ostracize you, right? You, if you sat on the front, you better go to the back. I know, right? And my mother had been married again, and my father had gone. And so it was a good long time, and so she married a man in the church. But the pastor would not marry them because they both had been divorced. Since then, he's changed his mind. But <laughs> back then, that's what he did. You know, and I thought, whoa, that's strange. But he let an associate pastor do it. Okay, <laughs> whatever. I thought that was kind of odd. <laughs> but, you know, and then he thought about it too and thought that wasn't right either. But, you know, and so the people get a lot of crazy thoughts and notions 
right? Especially if they're not spirit-filled and taught of the Holy Spirit, what is an unforgivable sin. So just to protect you and protect your thinking and, and getting it right with what the Word says, that only unforgivable sin is you can't ask God to forgive someone for not receiving Jesus as Lord and Savior, right? Because that's the only sin that the Holy Spirit convicts the world of. Okay, the Holy Spirit does not convict anyone of sin because sin is dealt with, right? So he does not convict you of sin. He tells you how things should be done, but he's not going to convict you of some sin except to not receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Amen? Yeah, it says that in John, First John, I think. In the little Johns it says that. Anyway, so here it is to... Remit, he says, whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. And so this is binding and loosing. And you are not, um, you're binding up by not forgiving. But it's not binding the person like you would think. It's bound in your own heart. It's bound in your heart. It doesn't matter to them one way or another if you forgave them. In fact, they, a lot of times they don't think they did anything wrong. Right? And the only one that it, it, it matters to or that it influenced is you. And the Bible says wherever strife is, there is every evil thing. And so if you have this unforgiven sin towards somebody it's strife and you're going to get you find yourself in this turmoil of unforgiveness for some other person for some you know stupid thing that the devil had them do and it's not going to bother them at all the only one that's going to bother is you and so God is showing you how to walk in freedom and how to walk in love and he says, this is why it's so important that you forgive others and remit their sins, right? And in the, so doing and remitting its sins is for somebody who is not born again, right? But when you forgive them and each and every person, you know, you say, no, I forgive them. Say somebody at work and talking bad about you, you know, they're not born again and everything else. And... Kill them, God, is what you want to say. <laughs> but this is not going to get you where you want to go, right? It's not going to bring reconciliation. It's not going to be bring peace in your, in your workplace. Now, God may decide to take that person out later, which a lot of times happen. I've seen it happen so many times. It's like, you know, it's like, okay, Saul, you don't want to follow me and you're giving my kids a hard time? Um, you're going to be knocked down and blind, and, and you better decide right now, young man, which way you're going to go. Either you're going to be for me or you're going to be against me. And Saul says, who are you, Lord? <laughs> Shortest salvation prayer anyway. Lord! <laughs> right? Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And so here it is. And so that remitting of sins and binding and loosing is what you got with salvation. See, they got born again, and now they have the authority to remit sins on the earth. Right? Very powerful. The keys of the kingdom of God, it says in, in Matthew 16 and, and um, 19. It says, this is the kingdom of God. The keys to the kingdom is loosing and binding. And because when you loose them and you bind up the devil and you loose that person. Now, this is deliverance. And I don't know if you've experienced, I know you girls have experienced some deliverance. And, and one particular time, uh, this was fairly recent for me, um, I thought uh, it was my job as a mother to make my children happy. Right, how codependent is that, right? <laughs> and anyway, um, and, and so the Lord had to tell me, no, Mary, that's my job. You can't do that. 
That's my job. Your job is to follow after me and teach them my ways. That's all you're supposed to do. It, it's their responsibility to um, seek Jesus and to seek his love and, and his, his goodness, right? And to know that the joy of the Lord is their strength. Amen? And to how to be joyful in the Lord, right? And, of course, it's being born again, they all were, so I, you'll find your way. <laughs> and then the, the burden was removed from me, right? And so this was a huge freedom. And it took me a little while to realize the freedom because I would fall into bad habits. Oh, they're, they're falling in trouble with them bills. I better go bail them out, right? <laughs> Make sure they're happy. Make sure they're okay. No, they got into trouble with bills. Yeah, kid, you made a mess. Better go clean it up. <laughs> is now my attitude, right? But it took a little while for me to develop that and not to fall into the same old patterns, right? And so it's like you bind up the strong man, bind up the devil, and you lose the person. The house is swept and garnished, right? And then you fill it up with the things of God, right? And doing those things that are right, and so it ta there is a, sometimes a little bit of recovery and a little bit of renewing of the mind to walk in the truth that God has for you, that God said. And the Holy Spirit is right there. No, remember, remember. Oh, that's right. I did it again. <laughs> you know, and, and you know, I, I did this a lot, right? And I always was doing it with Robert, too. It wasn't just my kids. I did it with everybody, right? I can rescue you. I can help you. <laughs> you know? and, and, all, and all of this. And it's like, Lord, I'm getting tired. And all my resources are going, you know, and rescuing and doing all this other stuff. And Robert, he didn't care. Oh, yeah, bring it. You know? yeah. <laughs> He's a guy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, Ken. No. <laughs> I know. Ken does the rescuing. Sarah, Sarah's running over. Dad, Dad, my no car is making noise. <laughs> I'll be right there, baby. <laughs> and he, he does. He does. He does. He's, you're wonderful at that. But, but uh, you know, and so this is very important with, with your deliverance is that loosing, that, that binding and loosing, right? And to walk in his ways. And so when you think of that binding and loosing, think deliverance, freedom, whether it be for you or for another person, right? And when they're born again, you're not so much um, remitting their sins. You're asking, um, you know, you're casting all your care on Jesus and, and having the Lord, you know, where you ha get yourself in that position that, yes, Lord, I do forgive them. And I give you all the care of that. And now, whenever that topic is going to come up, when the devil throws that topic in your ear, then you start immediately going into intercession and praying and saying what the Lord says about that person. They are fearfully and wonderfully made. That's, that's the person that God put there in my path that I may bless them and they will bless me and be a blessing. And I have the favor of the Lord and they have the favor of the Lord. And you just immediately go into that, that blessing them instead of cursing them like the world would do. Amen? That's what sets you apart as children of light. Bless not and curse not, right? But bless those who curse you. <laughs> Joyce Meyer, flesh burners. <laughs> I know, I heard her say that, and I thought, oh, yeah, that just says it all. <laughs> and so, and um, let me see, where are we going here? <laughs> and turn with me to Acts 2. Here's where it gets really the good part. This is the good part, guys. This is what we're really getting into here. And um, verse 1 through 4. Now we got the, the being born again experience where they got blown on by Jesus himself and filled with the Holy Ghost. And then in chapter 2 of Acts, he says, And when the day of Pentecost, okay, now let me back up a little bit here. It says Jesus was on the earth for 40 days before he got ascended, right? 
in um, Acts 1 and verse 3. It says, uh, being seen of them 40 days and speaking of things pertaining of the kingdom of God, right? And then they were all assembled together and they watched Jesus go up. And the angel of the Lord said, hey dudes, what are you looking for? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He'll come back again and that. And, so, and then they, they got on the right course. And then they went to Jerusalem and waited because God told them to wait, wait. And, and um, so they waited. And so here the day of Pentecost was fully come. And they were all in one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as fire. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Hallelujah. And with this they got the Holy Spirit. And um, in verse 8 of chapter 1, it says, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto the uttermost po um, witnesses un unto me, both in Jerusalem and all of Judea and Samaria and the uttermost parts of the earth. And so that's what Jesus was telling them. Go get to, over there to Jerusalem. Just hang out, wait, and you'll receive this power. And, of course, then Peter went out and preached. And that day, 3,000 people came to the Lord. 3,000 people all at once. And what, it, what it's um, saying here in verse uh, 37. Let me start there. And now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter, you know, they, they heard that Jesus was the Christ and you crucified him. <laughs> right? This is, they're pricked in their heart. You know, it's like, ah, we did that. And he says, um, what shall we do? And then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus for the remission of sins, that you have received the gift of the Holy, and you should receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Right? And now this is not, um, this baptism is the baptism into Christ Jesus. It's not baptism of water. That's not when you get the Holy Spirit. You get it when you ask Jesus into your heart. And so there is a difference when you see baptized in the Bible. There's the baptized into Jesus when you get born again. There's the baptized into Christ. There's the being the baptized into his death. Right? And there's the baptism of water. Right? Where you declare unto the world, I'm born again. And you go into that. And it's just, um, it's a... Uh, it's a Holy Ghost goosebumpy, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, God hugging on you because you've declared that Jesus is to all these witnesses, right? And it, and it is um, a wonderful step in your growth to Jesus, with Jesus. So I know I came up out of the water, you know, as was my way. I giggled. <laughs> yeah. I was nine years old. Come on, give me a break. <laughs> and I, I burst out in giggles. Right? And my mother, she was so embarrassed. <laughs> my mom, I got back to the seat, finally <laughs> dripping hair, you know, and, <laughs> and, and you know, and white, white clo cloth gone and dripping hair. And, the, you know, and the Baptist church was what they did. <laughs> and, and, you know, and my mom was just like, oh, Mary, you were laughing. I couldn't believe it. I was so embarrassed. And I could care less. <laughs> I'm happy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. What do you do with a kid like that, right? <laughs> Restrain yourself, child. I know. I was born this way. Sorry. <laughs> I know. My, mo my mother was always so refined, little lady, right? <laughs> Where'd you get that one? <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Lord God, you gave me humor. Okay. <laughs> And so, um, so that day were 3,000 added unto him. And I want you to, uh, oh yeah, verse 39. This is um, a promise to you from God. And I know that um, we as parents know this, but it's good that you know that this promise goes unto your children and your children's children. 
right? It says, for the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. This promise is unto you and to your children. That's a promise of salvation. So God promises that you and your household will be saved. Amen? And so every time you think, you know, wow, is that person ever going to come to the Lord? Are they ever going to come to the Lord? And you say, no, Lord, your word promises that they shall be saved in Jesus' name. They shall be saved. It doesn't have to be by me, my Lord, but I know you will arrange it so that they are born again. And and all of eternity with me in heaven. That's a promise of God. Amen? And so that you know that you and your whole household will be born again. Amen? That's a good promise. That's a really good promise to hang on to when the devil tries to throw fear at you. Right? Are they ever going to be? Yes. Right? Yes. And so then... Thank you, Lord. Where am I going with this? Okay. Uh, the remission <laughs> the remission of sins. So he says, um, baptize in the name of Jesus for the remission of sins. Now, I've already explained a lot to this, so I'm not going to go into a great, great deal of, um, of uh, explanation to it because now you know where I stand with remission of sins that it is all dealt with, right? And um, in Luke 177, it says, this is my job as an evangelist. This is to give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins. So salvation isn't just being born again. Salvation is the whole package, the whole deal that you got when your sins were forgiven. Amen. It's that covenant that you came into Jesus that you got everything that he is. That you became the heir in Christ Jesus. That you became holy. That you became righteous. That you had all authority in heaven and earth given into you as ambassadors of Christ in the name of Jesus. That you were made to be righteousness in Christ Jesus. That you can never again be unrighteous. And a lot of people think, oh, if, I'm, if I've sinned, I'm unrighteous. I've got sin on me now. But where are you? In Christ Jesus. If Jesus can be made unrighteous, then you can be made unrighteous. If he cannot be made unrighteous, then neither can you. Because you have been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. When he went to the cross, he took what? All sin, all sin on himself. And then he died and was risen, risen again, righteous and holy unto God. Amen? So sin was paid for by his death and by his blood. It was paid for. And so it's a done deal then. So when he rose again, he's without the sin. It's dead. It's dead. That's why all sin is dead to God. It is finished. It's done. Once and for all. One time, one price. Jesus paid it all one time. If mankind lost their righteousness through the sin of Adam and Eve, how much more is the blood of Jesus worth to make you righteous again? Amen? I'm really drilling this into you because you will hear over and over and over and over again how you're not righteous and how you're not perfect and that you have to, you know, re repent. And yes, you need to repent. That silliness to, you know, if you find out you're crossing the street and there's a car coming, repent, turn around and get out of the street. <laughs> right? If you find out that, that your spending is taking you down, you need to repent and say, Lord, how do I handle this and do it right and get me on top? 
right, and find out God's right way of doing things, right? And how you control the finances, the finances don't control you. How you raise the children, the children don't run you. <laughs> and they try. <laughs> they try. But, you know, they try your reins, don't they? But that's okay. God tries your reins, too. And he says, and it's not to show you that you would fail. He's showing you how strong and how successful you are. Amen. And so because he knows the choice that you'll make, but he gives you that choice and lays it out, right? Which are you going to choose? Because he knows you're going to choose life. He knows you're going to choose godliness. And he says, well done, good and faithful servant. Well done. Come on, let's run for it. Let's go for it. Amen? And so I was going to take you to Hebrews and all of that, but you all know it. You know it. Well, all right, I'll take you. <laughs> You're looking at me like, what do we know? <laughs> all righty. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. All right, take a shortcut. All right, no shortcuts allowed. <laughs> you know, it's, it's like... My daughter, she doesn't want to hear the whole sermon ever, right? <laughs> she's just, give me the shortcut, Mom. <laughs> give me the short version. <laughs> and she picks up, because she knows how, how I think and everything. So I, I just say half of a sentence, bah, bah, bah. and she goes, oh, yeah! yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's great. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh, ye of little words, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and, and it, it is, you, well, you know, you got a sister, you know how when you talk to a sister, it's like, you, you take these, like, different language almost, right, <laughs> and you know exactly what they're talking about, and everybody around you goes, huh, <laughs> 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 and, and, and you're just like, Never mind. <laughs> Don't go into the big explanation. It loses everything when you try, <laughs> you know, because they're already two miles down the road and you're down at the starting gate and you go, huh? <laughs> like, Don't try to catch up. Don't. No, no. Just take a shortcut. You'll see him at the end. <laughs> so um, anyway, so by the remission of sins, uh, you all know this, so I'm I'm, I'm just going to run it through it real quick. Hebrews chapter 10. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And he says, then in verse 9, he says, Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first. This is Jesus, right? He taketh away the first, the first covenant, that he may establish the second. So he did not come to destroy the law. He came to fulfill it and fulfill it with his death. The law said, where there's sin... There must be the blood shed in order to pay for the sin. And that's why God covered Adam and Eve so that the, the shame and the guilt and the condemnation would be covered. And they, he could love them freely. And it never actually got the sin away because it was the life of, uh, of an animal, a lamb. And... So when Jesus came, he fulfilled the old covenant where it was a man's life for man's sin. And in that, we have that perfect forgiveness. Now we have total remission of sins, total washed away, gone forever. And so now this covenant is on the covenant of grace. Amen. It's because it's unearned. We didn't have to do anything to earn it. It was a gift. And we did not have to do anything at all to um, uh, keep that gift. 
and the knowledge of our salvation is what we're learning in the Word of God. The knowledge that says, no, your sins are forgiven once and for all. That was great news to me when I heard that because I was raised a Baptist. And no, I, I even asked our preacher one time straight up. I said, it, you mean, you know, it tells the story, two will be taken and one left. <laughs> yeah, when, when God comes again, you know. And, and I said, you mean if I sinned one time and Jesus happened to come that day, that he, I would be left? And he goes, that's right. Because that's what they believed. That's what they believed, and that's what they taught. And they taught that you became unrighteous if you sinned. That you had to go and confess your sins all over again. Start at the beginning. Confess your sins to come into grace with God again. To come into his favor. What did they call it when you're out of, out of favor? What do, you, what do you call that? Ah, they, they had a common name for it. You know, it's like when a kid, you know, was sent to the room <laughs> for getting into the cookies or something. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, uh, yeah, and time out, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you, you were anyway. You were you were out of, out of his favor, and so that you had to earn it back by confessing the sin and asking forgiveness again. Well, the trouble with that was that as a kid, I was so sin conscious all the time, then all my prayer time was sucked up in, in asking forgiveness of, and trying to think of every sin that I committed, anyone in my family's committed, and na 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 And you know, and finally the Lord got through to me, and I, and I saw it, and I saw a preacher, Joseph Prince, on television, and he preached this righteousness. You're righteous now. And, and I said, that's the piece I was missing. That's it. I, Robert got home from work. I said, Robert, sit down. Watch this. Yeah. I had it recorded. Yeah. <laughs> Watch this. And he goes, yes, that's right. <laughs> you know, and we both did that. We had the big Oprah aha moment. Right? <laughs> With the truth. And you know it's the truth because the Holy Spirit says yes and amen yes and amen that's right that's right that's right god loves you you're never out of god's favor you're never uh, nothing can separate you from the love of god and this is why because your sins are dealt with they're forgiven once and for all <laughs> yeah you know and that made such a and the biggest argument that we used to hear from other preachers is once born again always you know once saved always saved because robert and i've always believed that you know I dismissed what that other pastor said to me. I said, no, nah, that ain't right. That ain't my God. <laughs> you know, I didn't believe it at all. I just thought, mm, you're missing it. But I was a good Baptist girl. I did not argue with the pastor. <laughs> right? <laughs> I just went away and went, mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and so, you know, you just know it, which was wrong even when you hear it. <laughs> even as a kid. Right? <laughs> and so... Um, so when we heard this, we knew that this was right. That and you know, and it and it went along because some people think that once saved, you're not always saved. If you sin, you lose your salvation. If you go so far away from God, if you're backslid, you could be out of salvation. If you died that day, you would go to hell. That's what they teach. So don't be surprised when you hear that teaching. If somebody argues with you, don't even argue. Don't even go there. The Holy Spirit will teach them the right way, just like he taught you. Amen? And so, you know, and you can say, oh, you know, I had a preacher, or one guy tell me recently, he says, you know, you know, what about all these people with all this money, and they're buying all these big cars, and it's like, I'm looking out there in the, <laughs> in the street, and there's my dad. You know, <laughs> it's like, yeah, I got one of those. <laughs> <laughs> right? and, and 
I, you know, and he started to put that down and like it was a bad thing. And I, and I started quoting all these scriptures of prosperity. I said, no, no, no. God, the blessing of the Lord, it makes us rich. And he adds no sorrow to it. And, you know, and prosperity, the Lord favors prosperity. He wants you to be wealthy. He wants you to be blessed of the Lord, right? And he wants you to, to grow in that blessing and be a blessing. You can't be a blessing if you're poor. <laughs> Right? And he was defending poorness. And I'm just like, no, wrong. You know? <laughs> but he's not a pastor. I was. <laughs> but no, it, it, but, but, and he understood, and I knew he would. And so it, it was all right. It was a good thing. So anyway, so when Jesus took all, all that, and um, in verse 12, he says, uh, but this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God. And verse 14 says, for by one offering, he hath perfected forever. You're perfect forever, guys. Forever. They that are sanctified. You're perfect forever. Right? Whereof the Holy Ghost also is witness to us, for after that he had said before, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws in their heart. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Right? And I will put um, their laws into their hearts and in their minds, and I will write them. And their sins and iniquities I will remember no more. Now where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin ever. Good news. That's good news. And so now there is no more offering for sin. So everything that God says, his promises, there can be no sin that separates you from that promise. Amen? Because sin has been dealt with once and for all. And so your sins are totally washed away. Anyone that has Jesus in their heart, those sins have been dealt with. Amen? And so we just have to come into that that remembering that when we think an ugly thought about ourselves, right, especially. Ugly thoughts about other people, you know, you, we seem to catch those quicker. No, 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 that's wrong, that's wrong, right? But if it's an ugly thought about yourself, sometimes that can get in there and, and distort really the way that God thinks about you and the way that God sees you, that you're, you're altogether glorious and wonderful to him. <gasps> And to have you beat up yourself with what the devil said about you, you know, is like, hey, you messing with my kid? <laughs> you know, and he will come in there and set you straight. And sometimes he'll, he'll use a pastor to do it. He'll use a friend to do it. He will come in there and say, no, you're wonderful. <gasps> you're absolutely the best thing that was ever created. Better than frosting on cupcakes. Better than the topping on a muffin. <laughs> I know. She left him, left him the old dry part and ate the good topping. <laughs> but he loved her. He loved her. He know that Mama sashed him one, too. <laughs> but... Uh, so we are set free. We are set free from all sin, from all, all condemnation, all guilt and, and shame. Jesus took all of that on himself on the cross. And so when those feelings of guilt, oh, I shouldn't have done that. I get that when I have to correct somebody, you know, and, and tell them, <laughs> you know, especially my kids even. And it's like, you know you got to stop drinking. You know that, you know, and, and you can just see them cringe because they know it. You know? <laughs> and, and, you know, and, and all of this stuff. And so it's like, yeah, you know what, why do you keep going back there? You know, you're not just going to quit again. <laughs> but, but, you know, and, and the Lord loves them. You know, he'll work with them. But, you know, and sometimes he will use you to say something to somebody else. But you'll say it in love. That still doesn't, you know, that we call it that confrontation. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's like, babe, I love you. <laughs> and when they men hear that, they go, oh, no. 
<laughs> Here comes the butt. <laughs> Honey, we need to have a talk. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. And they want to back right out the back door. Right. <laughs> I know there's something I need to do. <laughs> but, 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 but when you, you stop and you do it the way the Lord would do it, and, you know, and, you, you know, with, I'll just tell you this. Because Robert's not here, <laughs> but that you know he he's he's got um, uh, he's the boss issues, <laughs> and we all know who the boss is. <laughs> That's okay. He knows it. <laughs> Been there, done that, hey, baby. <laughs> and you know, but but he he falls into that. You know, uh, uh, man, bi business. You know, I rule. I rule. You drool. Yeah. <laughs> and and you know, and I have to tell him, no. We're a partnership. God has put us together to be stronger than one separated. That we are going to go through this. That we're going to be victors in this. That we are going to be um, followers of, of God and, and followers of Jesus and know what the right thing is to do. And when you start talking like that, then they go, yeah, that's right. You're for me. You're not against me. You know, and, and it took me a little while to learn this. Because, you know, the first thing you want to go is, ding, 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 you know, <laughs> I'd never do that to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? You know, and, and so you have to train yourself by the renewing of your mind by the word of God so that you can use that word skillfully. And so Robert has us writing out prayers. And pretty soon, if you go over that prayer enough, it will come out your mouth. Right? And you'll say, oh, you're the best thing ever. God made you just for me. You're the perfect mate for me. And we're going to go through this. And God is going to make us stronger than ever for, you know, for all to look upon. That a, a two to three standard cord is not easily broken in Jesus' name. That we are the victors. Wherever two or three are gathered together and we're gathered and God is here and we will have whatever we ask in Jesus' name. Yeah, we need our bills paid in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father God. We have the, these bills, and we command that money to come and to pay those bills now in Jesus' name. Lord, show us the best way to find to handle these finances so that this bill is paid quickly. And your word says to owe no man anything, Lord God. And so we take you upon your word, Lord God, and you will help us, Lord God. And this w bill will be paid. And we are a team going after this. Not one go spending whatever they want while the, the other one pays the bill. Right? No, you're a team. You're a team. And I don't know why this is all coming up, but yeah. Oh, I was just showing you an example of me and Robert. Now, and so, so we go into that, you know, and, so, and declare what the Lord says about our marriage and what the Lord says about, about um, the, the union and the strength of it, right? And the, that he, he brought the two of you together for that purpose, that you compliment him and he compliments you in Jesus' name, that those things that you were lacking in, see, because I'll give the person, you know, I'll, I'll give the shirt away. And he's like, whoa, wait a minute here. You know? <laughs> and so, but we do compliment each other. We do compliment. When I say, thus says the Lord, that he's on board. Right? Because then he knows it's God doing it and not me trying to rescue somebody. <laughs> right? And so I told you a lot about me today. <laughs> but so, so you have a, a reality check reality check right so lord thank you lord god for this word thank you and this is where i'm just going to end it right here because uh, in that you're perfect you're perfect and the rest of it was about intercession and jesus is our intercessor and he's calling all those things that god calls about you about what God's will is in your life. He's calling all those things over you all the time. Amen. He doesn't deal with sin anymore. He doesn't have to say, oh, Father, forgive them and declare they're covered with the blood. The accuser is cast out. No, he doesn't do all that. He's worried. He, he's not worried, but he is just concerned about bringing about God's will in your life. 
and that will is your success and your satisfaction and your joy and your, your peace. That's his, what's in his heart. And that's what we need to intercede for others. And that's what those prayers are all about, is our intercession for them. Amen. And declaring what God says about them. That's what Jesus is about, his Father's work doing. He only says and does those things that he hears and sees his Father do. Amen? Amen. So let's close with prayer. Thank you, Lord, for this word. Let it go into their heart, Lord God. Let it become real to them and that they know, Lord God, that you are on their side, Lord God, that you are with them, Lord God, that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world, that you are victorious, that you are the king's kids, and that you raise your head high and declare God's righteousness and God's goodness at work in your life and in every life that comes into contact with you that they have the favor of God just because you're in the room thank you father God for your blessings thank you Lord God for loving us let us go out Lord God loving others forgiving them Lord God and speaking all those good things into their life in Jesus name amen thank you for watching and participating with pastor Robert in this tremendous teaching as you practice putting into place these biblical truths, you will develop your human spirit as a mighty believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. Hi everybody, I'm Pastor Robert with Rider Ministries. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'm sure it has helped you. And I just also want to give you an opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So pray with me out loud and accept the Lord as your Savior. Say with me, Heavenly Father, that's right, say Heavenly Father, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Jesus, I invite you into my heart. Thank you, Jesus, for forgiving me of my sins. Holy Spirit, come and dwell within me and make me the kind of person you want me to be. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me today. Now, if you prayed that simple prayer, God heard you, he's written your name in the Lamb's Book of Life, and you will get to be with him in heaven. I'm so glad you prayed that prayer, so give us a call at 503-652-2650. Let us know you prayed that prayer of salvation. We love you. God loves you. We'll talk to you soon. God bless. We invite you to join us again in learning God's Word with these awesome video teachings. You can visit us on the web for more of God's revelation and biblical truths at writer.org. That's writer.org. And join us again next time for more of Writer Ministries with Pastor Robert Writer.